What's up guys, Daniel de Groot here, a full-time Jiu-Jitsu practitioner and European and Brazilian champion. I've been getting a lot of requests about people asking me how they should make a game plan. Uh, that was one of the most requested videos uh, that I should make. So uh, today I want to help you guys with building that game plan. So first let's define what a game plan really is. Game plans are used for individual competition matches and they should accomplish two to four things. The first thing is that they should enforce your strong position on your opponent. The second thing is that you should avoid your weak positions. If you know your opponent, you can also use their game into the game plan. So you can avoid their strong positions while forcing them into their weak positions. It depends a bit on your level um, if you should apply the uh, third and fourth step. If you're a brown belt like me and you've been competing for a long time, uh, you probably know all your opponents and at least a little bit of their game. If you're just starting out competing, if you're a white belt or a blue belt, you probably don't know anything about your opponents. So uh, you have to trust your own game uh, instead of just applying your game plan to theirs. So before you start making your game plan, you need to find out which positions are your strong positions and your weak positions. And this is all relative. Let's use an example. I'm not the best deep half guard player. That doesn't mean that I won't sweep a 50 kilo juvenile if, I'm, uh, if I get them in my deep half guard. But it does mean that I will have a hard time uh, sweeping a brown belt competitor uh, of 70 kilos. So uh, when you're thinking about if you're good in or bad in positions, always think about how you do those positions against your peers. So somebody around the same level, it could be one belt up or, or down, and uh, around the same weight could be a difference uh, of 10 kilos lighter, 10 kilos heavier. But you don't want to like uh, think about why that 130 kilo black belt keeps smashing you from that position. That doesn't mean that you're weak in that position, it just means that your opponent is very strong and good at jiu-jitsu. So if you're too novice and you don't have any real strong positions yet, it's important to just do what your coach tells you to do. A good coach should have a, a fundamentals program in place where he teaches white belts or other novices um, the, the basics of jiu-jitsu. Only when you understand the basics of jiu-jitsu, you can start building a personalized game. So uh, when you do have those personal uh, or that, that basic understanding of jiu-jitsu, you can start finding moves that work for you. And the best way to start, I would say, is find a competitor of similar weight uh, with a similar body type and uh, try to copy some of their moves. Some will work, some won't work, uh, but when you try to implement those moves, it usually has a, a high success rate. So first you need to get the basics under control. Uh, any good coach will, will teach you the, the basic fundamentals of jiu-jitsu, and from there you can start developing your own game, uh, usually based off what a high-level competitor with a similar body type does. I've made a video about um, studying jiu-jitsu matches in the past, and you can find it here. Uh, that should help you on the way of finding your own game. So just a, a, a side note, when you're making a game plan, you're thinking about winning that individual match. Uh, in, for your long-term improvement, it's really important you focus on your weak points. So you, you put yourself into your weak positions to get better at them. It isn't a long-term strategy. Game plans are made for individual matches. Okay, so now you've uh, established your strong and weak point, it's time to look how we do this in practice. So let's take a look at uh, two matches. One of my own matches and one of my friend Martin, who has a very different game than me. Here I'm uh, at the Nogi Europeans finding a guy that I knew was an MMA fighter. So I immediately pull guard. I didn't want to have any of his uh, stand-up game. I just forced him to play my game. I can immediately attack the guillotine. Uh, unfortunately, he managed to pop out. And from here I start playing my strong guards. Knee shield and reverse de la Hiva. The opponent was backing away quite a lot. Uh, here you see me attacking uh, a spin on their back take. But he keeps walking away. So I knew I had to adjust my game plan. It was hard to get anything going. Uh, so I decided to lock him up into the close guard. I lock my legs and I immediately try to attack the guillotine. It was still a draw at this point, so I knew I had to fight a little bit harder if I didn't want to put it uh, into the ref's hands. I lock his head, fall back, he decides to defend with his arm, uh, hand fighting me, that's a perfect cue for me to shoot a triangle, so I start attacking him here. So the whole match I didn't engage in any of his, of his game. I didn't want to fight scrambly, I didn't want to do any stand-up. I just forced him to play my position so I was perfectly safe and I could focus on uh, doing my strong attacks. Now I switch to the real triangle, lock it up tightly, he extends his arm and I manage to get the tap. Alright, the next match we're going to watch is from my friend Martin Bowens. He's a, a very tough competitor uh, and he is known for his takedowns and his strong passing game. But uh, this match we're going to watch is going to be a little bit different because he's fighting a guy that's also really good in stand-up. And Martin has been working on his guard game a lot. So for this match, he actually decides to change strategies. That's an uh, illustration of how important it is to make a game plan for each individual match. As you can see here, they're fighting stand-up. Nobody wants to engage too much. And then Martin's going to search for his grips to make a strong guard pull. There we go. Locks him up. 
and now the ref's gonna reset them in the middle. So the opponent tries to stand up, and Martin is actually gonna use his guard to still put his uh, get to a strong position. So here he does his, his collar drag he likes to do, collar drag single leg, goes again, and he takes the opponent down, immediately falling into a good position. So now he can force his A game uh, anyway. So he's here in half guard, and he's gonna try to force the pass here. All right, he gets a strong lapel grip around the neck, forcing his opponent to give in, and he managed to open the guard pass. Opponent tries to set up a baseball choke, doesn't work. Martin immediately attacks the back. And he's going to add his other hook very soon, getting the advantage for the pass. And now, here he gets the four points for the back take. So, as you guys could see, uh, you don't have to always start in the same way. Your game plan really has, is uh, depending on who you're fighting and what his uh, strength and weak points are as well. So, just to recap, game plans are made for individual competition matches. They're not something you use for the entire jiu-jitsu process. A game plan will change from match to match. It's important that you wanna force your strong positions on your opponent, avoid your weak positions, and if you know your opponent, you can force him into his weak positions while avoiding his strong positions. Again, for long-term improvement, you need to get good at a wide variety of jiu-jitsu. The more you know, uh, the, the wider variety of positions you're good at, the better you can adjust your game plan for certain opponents. So, Game plans are only for matches. If you want to get actually good in Jiu-Jitsu, you have to improve a lot of different aspects of Jiu-Jitsu. So before you can build that game plan, you need a solid understanding of Jiu-Jitsu. You need to understand all the basics and from there start working on moves that work really well for you and your body type. A good way to start is uh, looking at this video about studying Jiu-Jitsu matches. That way you can find a competitor that has a similar body type and a game that you like and start uh, implementing their moves into your game. So if you need any help uh, with making a game plan or finding moves that work well for you, uh, I'm uh, readily available for private classes as soon as the corona crisis is done. Uh, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, just send me a message or leave a comment and I'd be happy to help you out uh, for so far that I can uh, without actually training with you. Um, that's it for this week. I hope you guys liked the video. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you guys know the drill and see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.